want to share with you yeah. And your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ So tune in, tune in And we will grow together To increase our faith with God With one touch Ministries We're touching hearts And changing lives They had built a brotherly bond. Now there was a servant from the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So they summoned him to David. Um, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he replied, I am your servant. The king said, Is there no one else from the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? Ziba replied to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is crippled in both feet. So he had a disability. The king said to him, where is he? Ziba said, told the king, he is at the house of Mankor, the son of Emil at Lodabar. And then verse seven reads this. It says, David said to him, do not be afraid. He's talking to um, Mephibosheth. He said, do not be afraid for I will certainly show you kindness on account of Jonathan, your father, I will return to you every field of Saul, which Saul was his grandfather, and your father, and you will eat at my table perpetually. Uh, if you have your Bibles, you can go to your Bibles, that's all you need. Uh, if you happen to have your phones out and you got your uh, phone uh, on your app or your Bible on your app, today I want to talk to you about a message that says, the king is calling you out of Lodabar. Right, the king is calling you out of Lodabar. I want you just to say that real quick. Say, the king, the king is calling me out, calling me out of, Lodabar. of Lodabar. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this time, God. We thank you, Lord, for the word that's about to come forth, oh God. Father God, I pray, Lord, that I decrease and you increase on the inside of me. Now, may you be glorified, may we be edified, and may the devil be horrified. Lord of war, everybody, is a town. Not only uh, mentioned a few times in the scriptures, many scholars believe that um, it is the same called town called the bar that we see in the Bible. It's mentioned several times in the book of Joshua. We find that uh, one of the cities in Canaan that Joshua destroyed, Debar, whose name means, uh, Debar means pasture, or it means a sheepfold. Uh, it was located near the valley of Anchor in the, loading, uh, in, the, in the northern border of Judah, somewhere between Jerusalem and Judea. The exact location of the town is impossible really to know, but if Lodabar is the same town as the bar, somewhere in history the name has changed. The bar means uh, word, the original word means word or thing uh, or communication. So the prefix lo is a negative connotation, thus means Lodabar means no word. It means nothing or no thing. It means no communication. The town is not, um, the, the town, mean, it means that it has no pasture. It has no luck. It's insignificant. It actually means that it's a town of nothing. Or what we would say here in America, um, that it's out in the middle of nowhere. So today the king is calling you out of Lodabar because you may have had feelings like I, uh, like you haven't, like you may have feelings that I have no word or I don't, I don't hear from God or I don't have like this communication with the Lord or I don't have communication or fellowship with people the way that I really should have. You feel like that you're in a low pace place. Lodabar is not a place where you want to be. It's a desert place. It's dry. Now your mouth get dry. You need some water. It's a dry place. Lodabar didn't have no grass. No water. 
It was worse than the ghetto. It was worse than the hood. It may be, uh, and you may feel like that. I'm living in Lower Bar right now. I live in the hood. I live in the ghetto. I live on the wrong side of Orlando. But uh, Lower Bar is a place where you feel like that you don't have the joy of the Lord. So now you're sinking. You're sinking. You know, I don't know, uh, I've seen movies where um, people get stuck in quicksand. I don't know why I call it quicksand, because you sink real slow. You get stuck. You get stuck deep in your sin because what happens is that the enemy comes to attack your mind. So when the enemy comes to attack your mind, he allows you to start a slippery slope into a place where you're not supposed to be. That's why they say that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Sinking is so deep in sin, very deeply stained within. My life is sinking. My job is sinking. My family is sinking. You feel like that your foot is stuck in the mud. You feel like that you can't get out of the place that you're at. I'm here to tell you that you're sinking. You have no hope. You have no joy. You have no love in your heart. Everybody that's around you get on your nerves. You're sinking. Jesus. Going down to a place that um, you don't want to be. It's just like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by the angry sea. Some of you older people may know this song. When the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me, I wonder, what have I done? Sink. Make this race so hard to run. And then I remember the old former song of my pastor uh, in, in Michigan. I grew up, he would sing the song. It said, I had some good days and I had some hills to climb. I had some weary days and I had some sleepless nights. But when I look around and I begin to think the things over, that all of my good days outweigh my bad days. So why am I complaining? Why am I sinking? God has been good to me. How many people God has been good to them? Although you feel like that you're in a place of sinking, although you feel like you're in a place of going down, although you feel like that the world is coming up against you. Everybody is coming up against you and you got this weight on your shoulders, you get this monkey on your back, and you feel like that you just can't get the monkey off your back. Sinking. My first point here I want you to realize is that I want you to know that God has been good to you. Even though you feel like that you're sinking, although you feel like that um, nothing is going your way, it seems like nothing, but God has been good to you. If you begin to think back over your life, you begin to think about the things that God that he has saved you from, and he also saved you from things that he didn't allow to happen in your life. Some of you should have been dead, sleeping in your grave, and you had no business being here on the first Sunday of May, May 24th, in the year of our Lord, 2022. You had no business being here. I remember my mother. She said that when I was being born, I was coming breach. When babies are born, they come head first. I was coming feet first. And what happened is that uh, my mother said while she was laying in the bed, she said she began, like you see on the movie, she said she saw the, the curtain in the hospital room uh, open up and she said she saw an angel of the Lord come into the building. She said at that time she didn't recognize there was an angel because the angel looked like somebody who she knew. But she was like, well, well, I know that's not that person. Plus, I was born in Fort Knox, Kentucky. I was born on an army base and there was no other black people around. But she said it was a black lady, a black angel that stepped into her room and looked at her and said, you and your baby, it's going to be all right. And just like she said, you'll see in the movies, she, the angel backed up and the curtain fell down. And so she said when she woke up, she said she fell asleep. And she said when she woke up, she said she began to ask the people, the black nurse, the black nurse, 
Because they they say, ma'am, you and your husband are only black people up in here. And so she said she recognized that there was an angel that came by to stop. So you could have been dead sleeping in your grave. You don't understand that God is protecting you. God is your rock. He is your source. I know that there may have been some bad things that may have happened in your life. But I'm here to tell you that God is good. Yeah. Say this, say, God is a good, good God. God is a good, good God. And the devil is a bad, bad devil. The devil is a bad, bad devil. God is a good, good God. And the devil is a bad, bad devil. Yeah. I know that you have felt sometimes in your life that somebody dropped the ball on you. God is calling you out of Lola Bar. Mephibosheth is the name of this person that we're looking at in the Bible. Now, the name of Mephibosheth ain't no good name either. Mephibosheth means shame. From the mouth of shame. So now, not only do, you know, now something that happened to you when you at five years old, somebody dropped you, somebody left you for dead, really. So let me just tell you this story really quick. What happened is that uh, uh, there was some war, there was some killing that was going on, and the Fibbishef nurse found out that they was getting ready to come for this. So she picked up the child and began to run. And she ran as far as she could. And when she ran as far as she could, uh, what happened was that the child must have slipped out of her hand some kind of way. He fell, and when he fell, broke his legs. And both, not just one leg, both legs, and now he paralyzed. He became disabled. So now, instead of her picking him back up, what she did was she left him there. Left from there in Lodabar. Left from there for dead. How many people have, you feel like they dropped you and left you paralyzed, dropped you, and felt like that you're disabled now, dropped you in the middle of nowhere. Dropped you, just boom, dropped you, left you there for dead. Mephibosheth, out of the mouth of shame. How, what? What did I do to shame you? What did I do to hurt your feelings? I wasn't asked to be born. Shame. That's why it's important. I truly believe it. That's why it's so important that you got to know what you name your children. You got to know what these names mean. You don't know what your name means either. Find out what it means. If it's something somebody made up, Listen, give it a positive connotation. Out of the mouth of shame. Why would you name your child out of the mouth of shame? Maybe because he was born in shame. Maybe he was a case of a, a rape victim. A mother was a case of a rape victim. Out of the mouth of shame. Uh, maybe there's something that happened to him in the midst of when he was born uh, out of the mouth of shame. What if every time somebody calls your name, you heard shame? Shame. I'm ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of her. In the beginning of our scripture, uh, again, we discovered that uh, Mephibosheth was only five years old. Um, they were fleeing the scene and she dropped Mephibosheth in a, in a hurry. Left him alone, left him lame, left him not able to walk, left him there not to be able to defend himself. So now since the age of five years old, Mephibosheth have been dealing with abandonment issues. Left him in the middle of nowhere, abandoned, no one. So who drops you? Who left you there for dead? Who left you in the middle of nowhere? Mephibosheth, shame. Point number two, people, you have to understand that there, there's word curses that people put on you. There's word curses that, uh, that you may hear. You need to break the chains of word curses. 
break the chains. Anyone can um, curse, word curse. What a word curses. You don't, you don't need to learn witchcraft to curse someone. We all use our mouth, we use, use our tongues in ungodly ways to curse ourselves and also curse people. Some curses people say to each other, you will never be, you'll never make it, you'll never be successful. You were born to suffer. You won't be able to have children. You're no good. Boy, you crazy? You might as well die. You better off dead. Word curses. Things that we put on ourselves. Things that we put on other people. Just as uh, we suffer from unintended curses as well. God's word results in a harvest of good fruit. So we have to learn how to say good things, good fruit. We have to learn how to break those word curses. In the same way that you can tear somebody down, it's the same way you can lift somebody up. Amen. Give them an encouraging word. You ain't got to be prophetic. You ain't got to know, no, oh, shine, oh, God. No, you don't even have to do all that. You see somebody that's down, just be able to lift them up. Word curses. Curses, you can curse yourself. You can curse someone else. You can curse anyone. But the Bible says death and life is in the power of your tongue. I want to encourage the, uh, the parents that's in the house. Make sure that you don't say word curses over your children. I want to be able to tell the children today, don't say word curses over your parents when they happen to discipline you. Don't say, I hate you. I don't like you. I don't want to be here anyway. Don't say those things. Those are word curses. How we do this? We, we, you know, when, when you say those words, it goes out into the atmosphere. God said that my word will never return back to me void. When you speak it into the atmosphere, you can't bring it back. A good I'm sorry is okay, but you release a word into the atmosphere. So today, I'm here today to tell you that you got to break those word curses. Now, let me say this to you. You got to learn how to forgive. Know how to forgive and bless those who have put word curses over you. A lot of times it's, it's hard to uh, forgive because you know, people have done some bad things to people. Now, let me say this. My, I was a foster parent for about five years. I still have you know, children and things of that nature. But I was a foster parent for five years. Took care, took, took care of God, God, I don't know, I don't know how many kids I took care of. I was a single foster parent at that as well, living in New Jersey. And the children that used to come to my home, my first son that came to my home, he would tell me, he was like, my dad didn't love me. He would beat me. He would, be, he, he would just come in the house and just, just slap me for no reason. He said, I, I couldn't defend myself. That's the reason why I hung out to the streets, because I, I got more love out in the streets than I did at home. He was attacked not only physically, but also by word curses. Because his dad told him that he was no good. He was a nobody. He didn't do anything. He was not worth nothing. Word curses. So when he come into a home like my home, it was just like he was able to suck it up. Like, wow, you, you really love me. And I was telling him, I said, Deep, I love you. Deep, I love you. To the point he was like, Okay, this love may not be real here because I don't, I don't know. Afraid to get close to people because I don't know. But I had to teach him to make sure that he forgive his father. Don't forget the pain though. That's, that's where the forget and forget come in at. For, no, forgive him. And don't, say it again with me honey, forgive the pain. Oh, no, don't forget the pain. But forgive them in your heart. 
I'm going to have to forgive and forget the fact. Thank you. It's up to me and my wife. We coin together. Because a lot of times, we can forgive the person, but we don't forget the pain. There you go. Yeah. We don't forget the pain. It still hurts. It still hurts on the inside. So we have to release it. We have to be able to release it. So break the chains of word curses of your life. I want you to begin to break the chains of your family, the chains uh, of word curses over your family. Break the chains over the church. The, like, maybe church people have hurt you or things that happen in the church. Break, break the chains of that. Today we are breaking chains. It is our time and it is our season to break the chain of bad cycles. Hallelujah. Today, I want you to forget the trauma that happened on the inside of you. When we go through trauma, it's like um, this, this thing happens to our lives and they shape our lives of how we grow up. So young people, I want you to listen to me on today. I want to tell you that you don't want the trauma, the bad things that happen into your life. Form your life when you grow up because when you grow up, then you... You get stuck. Yeah. Going back to that stuck again. Sinking. You don't want to be sinking in life. You want to pro pro propel to go forward. It forms our world. And we build walls to make it hard for people to climb and break down those walls. Now you've built an is uh, you built a wall. It's your defense mechanism. Uh -huh. It's created. Let me just tell you just one more testimony. I'm talking about me now. Growing up, <laughs> growing up, it was the big thing to wear the big baggy jeans, sag, all this other kind of stuff, big clothes, you know, and, you know, have all the nice sneaks and everything else. My parents, they were able to provide, but I didn't have all that good, good, good stuff or whatever. But, because I wanted to be in with the in crowd, yeah. I would act like them. I put my head, my, you know, put on big clothes and sag and, um, it was an because, you know, you had to have to walk at the end. I don't know, you know how y'all kids do it right now, but y'all got to have a certain walk at the end. So I got to walk through the whole way to school. They was like, yo! That's where I got the, uh, the nickname, Shannon the Man, Shannon the Man! But I was portraying something that I was not. I wasn't no gangster, although I lived in the hood, but I knew I wasn't gangster. I wasn't hood all like that. I would feel insecure because, you know, all right, I'm in high school, I ain't got the deepest voice. You see these jokers with big deep voices. <laughs> Back then, <laughs> I'm just telling my testimony, I don't know about y'all. I was in high school. I had low self-esteem, low confidence. I had a good front, but that wasn't me. And I knew that wasn't me. And so I portrayed something that I really felt on the inside that was not. So the young people today, I want to encourage you, don't portray to be something that you're not. Listen, I'm going to tell you, right, all that stuff, it washes away. Once you get out of high school, once you graduate, bruh, bruh, <laughs> that stuff is out the door. You got to grow up. If you decide to go to college, college is a whole nother level. Most of your friends, I'll say this, most of my friends that I went to high school with, Two years after I graduated high school, either locked up in jail or dead. If it was a locked up in jail or dead, they were uh, on drugs. And on drugs real bad, too. Let's not portray to be something that you're not. So listen, life lesson. Always be yourself and never let anybody else to persuade you to be anything else but yourself. The enemy fights you and he fights you and he tries to tell you that you're somebody that you don't want to be, you can't be. No one loves you, but Jesus is here to tell you that I am a friend to the friendless, I'm a mother to the motherless, I'm a father to the fatherless, 
I am good. Here we go again because we said the first point was God is good. God is a good, good God. And the devil is a bad, bad devil. God said, I am a good God and you are loved. Now let's get back to our story here. King David. King David received, uh, received the Ark of the Covenant from uh, Obed-Edom's house. And there... Um, he stood and, and when um, <laughs> uh, King David went to Obed Edom's house and he uh, brought the Ark of the Covenant back to Israel. When he brought it back, so then he said, Hey, is there anybody I can show some kindness to? His servant told him about Mephibosheth that was down in Lodabar. Again, Lodabar means, you know, uh, down in the desert somewhere. And so in verse 7, of 2 Samuel 4, David said, uh, he went to Mephibosheth himself. He said, don't be afraid, for I will certainly show you kindness on account of Jonathan, your father. And I will return back to you the things that you uh, are owed, the land that you're owed. Now watch this. Not only did he say, I'm going to return it back to you. He said, I want you to eat at my table for the rest of my life, for the rest of your life. So right here in my closing, I'm here to tell you today that point number three, that is the celebration is in order. Yes, yeah. yeah, celebration is in order for you because there may have been some things that you're afraid of and it's time right now, the celebration is now in order. There you go, honey, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations is in order because now you're coming into the house. You're coming into things that God has promised you and he's pulling you out of lower bar. Hallelujah. And I want you guys to know that right now is a time to celebrate. The king is calling you out of lower bar. Hallelujah. Say, the king is calling me out of lower bar. The king is calling you out. Hallelujah. And not only is he calling you out of Lodabar, but he's calling you out of the desert place. He's calling you out and he's calling you to come eat at his table. He's about to restore back to you every single thing that he's promised you. And today is a time to celebrate. Come on here, honey. Give it on to me right now. And right now, it is a time to celebrate. It's time to celebrate because he's about to restore every single thing that she has stolen from you. Everything that the devil stole from you, I'm here to tell you he's about to give it back to you. I don't think I told you to touch your neighbor yet, but touch your neighbor say, neighbor, say I want it all back. Every single thing that the enemy has stolen from me, I want it back. I want my love back. I want my house back. I want my kids back. I want my joy back. Say, I want it all back. I want my family back. I want my kids back. I want my job back. I want my spouse back. I want my love back. Say, I want it all back. God is about to restore everything that the devil stole from you. It is time to celebrate. Come on, young people. I know that this may not seem like that this is the right time to celebrate, but God said he wants you to stand up on your feet and begin to celebrate. He wants you to clap your hands, begin to celebrate, begin to shout unto God with a voice of triumph because he wants you to celebrate. Congratulations is in order and it's time to celebrate. Come on, walk to somebody and say congratulations. It's time to celebrate. Congratulations, sir. It's time to celebrate. Congratulations, sir. It's time to celebrate. Congratulations, Apostle. It's time to celebrate. Congratulations, young man. Boy, y'all not moving. Tell somebody, congratulations. It's time to celebrate. Hallelujah. Congratulations, young man. It's time to celebrate. Congratulations, woman of God. Congratulations, 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 it's time to celebrate, congratulations, it's time to celebrate, this is cool about to be over with, congratulations, it's time to celebrate, congratulations, it's time to celebrate, congratulations, it's time to celebrate, hallelujah, this is a time for celebration, because God is calling you out of Lodabar, he's calling you out of that Lodabar, He's calling you out of that desert place. Congratulations. It's time to celebrate. So many times I failed him. And I've done things my own way. I fell down so low. And I thought I couldn't see the right of day. But when I look and see what God has brought me from, I can say congratulations. It's time to celebrate.